called deinstitutionalization. Um, so the idea behind itself was to give patients more autonomy, to acknowledge that they are being treated inhumanely. That's good, but to leave them with no treatment at all, that's bad. Um, so instead of giving them a place to go, they were just kind of released to their families. If there happened to be bed availability in a psychiatric hospital, we'll send them there, pretty rare. Um, if there's some kind of community center they can go to, that's an option. If they've got private institutions, that's good too. So they've got somewhere to go, right? We get a bus ticket and $5. $5 is not gonna get you into any of these places. Because the fact of the matter is, some people's families not only could not deal with their loved one who had mental illness, they didn't want to. So they weren't necessarily welcomed back into their home. The resources still aren't there. If they didn't have money, no way could they pay for a private institution. No way could they get themselves into a community center. And no way could they buy a bed in a psychiatric facility. So they let them go, claim that they had enough, but you have to have the resources to get somewhere else. And a lot of these people did not. So they were kind of left to fend for themselves. So again, patients were often released more damaged due to brain damage, bot surgery, trauma, beatings, all of that, and unskilled when they arrived. You weren't getting any job skills in these institutions. They weren't teaching you, hey, you wanna be a firefighter? Here's what you do. Or hey, you seem to be good with numbers. Here, this is how you can do accounting. They're not giving them the college degrees. They're not giving them education. They're not giving them any skills. They're literally giving them a bus ticket and a $5 bill and kicking them out the door. So as you can see, this isn't necessarily good. Best of intentions, worst outcome. Okay, so let's do an activity. So thinking about deinstitutionalization, people getting slapped with a $5 bill, kicked out the door. Some people were more prepared than others. So let's do this. So imagine that these two fictional people were recently released from a state asylum due to the processes of deinstitutionalization. So the facilities they were at closed. Um, so based on the resources and support available to them, which we'll see below, who do you think is gonna fare better once they get kicked out the door of the institution and why? So patient A, we got Arthur Fleck. Any fans of the Joker in here? Yeah, cool. So diagnoses, many. Um, paranoid schizophrenia, PTSD, traumatic brain injury, not looking so good, pretty rough. I don't know how much skills this person is going to have without serious assistance. Medication needed, oh yeah, definitely. Um, job skills, you know, he's got some clown and some comedy experience, it'll be fine, everybody's looking. Um, employment status, odd and pretty unstable. Um, he's not gonna be a 50 year career veteran in something with a corporation or anything like that. That's not gonna work for him. Family support, none. Insurance, none upon release. Once you get kicked out of the institution, nobody's there to take care of you, tell you how to sign up for anything. All of his resources are gone. Transportation, no car, mostly relegated to buses or walking. If he can afford a bus pass, that is. I mean, financial status, destitute. No skills, no financial support from family. Um, barely a home, probably getting evicted next week. So destitute, not meeting those basic needs. Meanwhile, we've also released Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne, as soon as he gets kicked out the institution, this is what he's looking at. So diagnosis, post-traumatic stress disorder from the death of his parents, right? Seems to drive everything he does. Um, medication needed, yeah, he kind of needs it to feel better and to function every day, so that's good. Job skills, I mean, he's got skills in philanthropy, he's got business, he's got good connections, everybody likes him, everybody attends his parties, and he's also got some skills in crime investigation and fighting. So there you go. Um, employment status, it's unique, but it's stable. He's gonna be okay. Family support, I mean, he's orphaned, but he got left with a lot of money. So financially, yes, he does have family support and some inheritance that's passed down. Insurance, of course he's got insurance. You know, it's full coverage, medical, dental, vision, whatever he needs to be Batman, essentially. Transportation, several Lamborghinis, cool Batmobile, probably many other things, motorcycles, whatever he wants he has. Um, financial status, billionaire. So, <laughs> considering what we have, we've got Arthur Fleck, got a little bit of comedy experience, really needs medication but doesn't have any insurance, no family support, nothing. And then we have Bruce Wayne, aka Batman, 
who also needs some medication, but you know, he's got full coverage, he's a billionaire, he's got plenty of cars, easy transportation, he's got a driver. Who is going to fare better with that $5 bill and the kick out the door? Bruce Wayne. Why? Is it because Bruce Wayne's smarter? Is it because Bruce Wayne makes better decisions with his life? Yeah. I think it's mainly, honestly, just because of his financial status. Like, sadly, I mean, his money is going to be able to get him what he needs, really, most of the time. And for patient A, like, that money, he doesn't really have any money to get what he needs. Right. Yeah, exactly. Anybody else want to add on to that? Just be a lack of resources, right? Like, for the Joker, like, since he doesn't, like she said, he doesn't have a financial support, so he can't, if he doesn't have access to the resources, Bruce Wayne does. Right. So, if Bruce Wayne can step out of the asylum doors, have his chauffeur waiting for him with a billion dollars in his hand, cars waiting at home, he's probably going to be okay. He's got business connections. He can find a job, fine. Meanwhile, <laughs> Arthur Fleck, nobody's there to pick him up. He might, maybe got a bus ticket, I don't know, probably going to be walking home, seeing if he's maybe not evicted, has no skills other than a little bit of comedy and clowning. People aren't really looking. So, as you can see, I hope from this, the, the sociological perspective, yes, we do care about the effects of mental illness in terms of cognition, in terms of decision making, but we are really looking at how mental illness affects people's ability to receive resources um, and security from society, and kind of vice versa. So how does Batman's millionaire, millionaire status um, affect his ability to then seek help to find a job after? So this is an illustration of how social conditions fundamentally either increase or decrease a person's chances of success, even if they have a similar mental illness. Does that make sense? Is that kind of clarified? Okay. Um, due to the lack of resources, and support, kind of like Arthur Fleck was facing. A lot of people who are mentally ill often have really, really difficult social conditions that they're dealing with that doesn't make it easy for them to cope or to recover from their mental illness, um, such as homelessness. Um, they could be facing addiction, you know, if they're not necessarily getting the right kind of drugs they need, but hey, heroin works, and I can get it on the street. It's not terribly expensive to me as compared to trying to get insurance. That could be an option. Food insecurity probably not eating for a few days, no insurance, so they can't just walk into a clinic and say, hey, I need help, can you help me get the resources and medications that I need? Um, they're probably facing unemployment. So without employment, getting insurance is very difficult, at least good insurance. Um, so life, so they are left without skills and assistance um, after they're released from the institution, kind of like Arthur Fleck. Um, so when you can't make it through normal means, meaning if you aren't, Batman, Bruce Wayne, and you're not a billionaire, you don't have good connections, you've never had like a really meaningful, stable job in your life, what are you gonna do? You're gonna turn to crime, right? There's options here, they're not legal, but they'll get you what you need. And particularly in the form of connections with other people, um, they can help you get housing, um, they can help you buy a car, you know, if you drug deal enough, you can afford a pretty nice car, as long as you don't get caught. So they may turn to illegal means, um, such as theft and shoplifting. So, gosh, you know, I haven't eaten in five days. That loaf of bread sitting out there by the bakery, that looks real good. I'm just gonna take it and distract that guy. Hope he doesn't catch me. Um, prostitution or sex work. I don't have anything else to my name. I have no skills, I have no education. I do have a body. So that is something that I could commodify or sell in order to get whatever it is that I need away from this and from the Batman Arthur Fleck um, comparison is that people who have mental illness are not more likely to commit criminal acts than anybody else. They're not inherently worse people. They're not inherently more criminal people. They just have a greater likelihood that maybe crime is something they would need to turn to if they do not have those supportive practices in place, good family, good jobs, good education, skills, if you don't have that, you're kind of left desperate, and sometimes your only path towards success is going to be through criminal means. Does that necessarily make you a terrible person? No.